Inquisitors. Northmen. Eaters. Lend us your... Ears. Your blades. And a huge thank you to all of our Patreons. Thank you to the Pit Fighters, the First Swords, and all of the Bright Stars. Truth and Courage. Hello and welcome back to you for the very first time to the channel. I am Will, this is my brother Ed, and today we are very, very, very excited to be talking about the First Law. We love the First Law, we never stop talking about it. We talk about it in our sleep. We cannot wait for the best of cold adaptation, which will be happening at some point soon. Uh, well, soon relatively, as in, in the next 18 months. Most likely, Five anyway. Years, probably. Yeah, probably 10, 12, 15 years. But anyway, today we're talking about why we love the first law, and we have been very lucky enough and honoured that some amazing YouTubers have sent us clips talking about why they love the first law. So without any further ado, to get away from our boring voices, we'll be back with you a little bit later, but let's head in into why people think the first law is genius. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike here. I had Ed and Will drop in my email and say, Mike, we were wanting to know what you think is so great about the first law. We want you to kind of keep up with it a minute. Well, I think the first thing is a minute. Okay, let's see what we can do here. What isn't awesome about the first law? It's got the best characters. It's got the best dialogue. It's got some of the best villains that you don't know who they are until you read the entire thing. It has the most depressing and cruel and punishing and reprehensible world that there is in fantasy. And somehow... That's a great thing. So, guys, uh, this is obviously my favorite fantasy series. It's going right now. It's never ending in how much I get out of it every single time that I reread it. And I think the fact is the characters are what are going to make it just so much better than anything else that you're reading right now and the way that they interact with one another. The dialogue is just hilarious, but it's in a cruel and punishing world, as I said. So it kind of seems kind of funny to say, hey, it's a really funny book. But it is actually quite funny. But it's such an amazing series, and it's one that I will never, ever get tired of revisiting and i don't think that you will either so if you're considering reading the first law by joe abercrombie i gotta say it's better to do it than to live with the fear of it hi brothers Gwyn. thank you so much for the invitation and you asked me both of you asked me what are the things that i love most about the first law world by joe abercrombie so the first law world is one of my favorite series of all time i have talked about this so many times uh, in my reviews and also on my youtube channel so many times but to describe it as simply and as fast as possible, I will have to say that what I like most about the first law world is the characters. I know that is a cliche, but it is true. The Blade itself, the first book in the first law trilogy, just as an example here, has been released for more than 15 years now. And people still remember Logan Ninefingers, uh, Sandan Glokta, uh, Jezal Dan Lutar, and so many characters in the series so dearly. I think that says a lot regarding Joe Abercrombie's characterizations. And also, no one writes humor as good as Joe Abercrombie in the grimdark subgenre. On top of that, he's also one of the best close quarter combat scenes writer. I just love everything about the first law world. I think it is amazing. And if you are someone who haven't read the first law series yet, make sure to do it. Hey guys, it's Christian from Lost in Discovery. And thank you for having me on the Brothers Gwyn channel, guys. You are absolute legends and it's an honor to be here. And even better to be talking about the first law series by Joe Abercrombie. I adore this series. I love it so much. And I'm going through it for a second time at the moment on audiobook. And it is an absolute joy to get through. Now, when people talk about this series and what they enjoy about it, without a doubt, the first thing most people will say are the characters and the incredible dialogue that is throughout these books. And the characters are unforgettable. The dialogue is sharp. It's hilarious. It's super sarcastic and self-aware and hilarious humor. But what's sort of surprised me about the series as I went through it was just how much it evolves over time. It's pretty much broken into three trilogies in my mind. And not only does it show how characters progress and change over a large period of time and how they have their own children and it's just fascinating once you have a, a cast of fascinating characters to follow them into old age if they're lucky enough to make it and to see their children and their families grow is fascinating but what's also really interesting and perhaps what the first law doesn't get enough credit for is it's awesome world building and i don't think it's really at the forefront of Joe Abercrombie's writing or his mind even, 
but I found it really, really cool and interesting to see how the world changes from a very sort of standard medieval fantasy with some magic sprinkled in to a more industrial revolution setting over the course of these nine mainline books. The way Joe plays with how useful magic is compared to just having wealth in this world is a really interesting commentary, and just the whole way people are trying to cope with the advancement of modern technology in a fantasy world is really intriguing to me too. These books have been playing in the background of my life for a very long time and they're endlessly entertaining. You'll remember these characters for the rest of your life and the world building and story and the way that technology progresses over time is a really underrated part of this series that I can't recommend strongly enough. Thanks for having me guys and everybody you should read the first law. Hey Will and Ed, this is Matt from Matt's Fantasy Book Reviews and Normally when I get asked one of these collab questions, uh, I go behind me and I grab the book. But the reason I can't do that here is because I listen to these on audiobook. And it's also, quite frankly, my favorite thing about the first law. The first law audio narration is the greatest audio narration that has ever existed in the history of audiobooks. It is absolutely masterful. Now, I love the books. They're amazing. They're a top series for me, no matter what the audio narration was. But this is the perfect, perfect job at putting all of these characters, these rich, rich characters to life. I will never be able to think about the first law without having the voice of Glockta stuck in my head, without thinking of what Logan Ninefinger sounds like in real life. It's perfect. If you've never read an audiobook before, the first law is how you have to do it, and it'll ruin you forever on every other audiobook that ever comes after it. All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television show in the history of the world. I'm Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. I've been asked to give a short video on why I love Joe Abercrombie's First Law series. I've got all of his First Law universe books right here. And what I love about this guy, this guy is the king of grim dark, the king of just writing cool characters in cool settings, doing cool things with great, great, unbearably beautiful and brutal prose and dialogue that rivals anything out of a Quentin Tarantino movie. This guy's books are just plain dope, and you cannot go wrong. Hey, Brothers Gwyn. How you doing? Thank you for having us on the channel. We are the guys at Two to Ramble, and much like you, Richard and I, we are also brothers. Can't you see the resemblance at all, a little bit? Yeah, I don't think they're going to buy that one. We're, we're brothers in our hearts, right? Yeah, one one person has hair and the other does not. Yeah, no. Has dignity. <laughs> <laughs> Self-respect. <laughs> Anyways, here's our thoughts of the first law, Richard. Take it away. Well, unlike this guy, I actually read. What I really loved about first law, if I had to boil it down, is the roller coaster of emotions that Joe Abercrombie is able to get you to feel about his main characters. He actually takes a risk. And many authors get you to really love their characters. There's very few authors that can get you to love their characters and then hate them. And then love them again and then hate them. He's willing to take the risk to make his good characters do bad things in a way that many authors just can't risk doing. If I had to do a second point, it would definitely be his ability to tease the reader, where the reader knows something the characters don't, and so you know something's coming. It's looming over the whole story, and you're just waiting for the drop to fall. And it's such a cathartic release when it actually happens. It's a very enjoyable ride. Richard, that was actually a pretty good take. I'll give you that. Oh, thank you. And brothers, thank you very much for having us on. What's up, brothers? Gwen Andrews Wizardly Reads here, and thanks for asking me on why I like First Law. And for me, First Law by Joe Abercrombie is a fantastic introduction to the darker side of fantasy. In typical fantasy, we, we, we kind of get a sinister kind of character over there, 
and then you know everybody else is fighting for the side of good or as a henchman but in first law we zoom in on the nitty-gritty of characterization where not everybody's a paragon a lot of people are selfish and there can be a lot of humor in dire dire circumstances and that is something that joe abercrombie has mastered he has mastered dark humor in the face of adversity he has zoomed in on the characterization to kind of shine a light on all of the darkness that can be within a specific individual while still fighting for something i think that this is something that Lord Grimdark has mastered is basically just showing you that there can be grittiness in fantasy. And I think that it's something that is fantastic and super special. What up nerds? My name is Leslie Smith and I come from the channel The Nerdy Narrative. Ed and Will asked me to be part of this video today telling you why I love the First Law Trilogy. This was my first time reading Joe Amber Crombie. It's how I became friends with the channel Steve Talks Books. I was not an audiobook user at that time. I know that's crazy if you happen to watch my channel because now I'm audiobooking like crazy and it's due to this series and it's audiobook narrator Stephen Pacey. So we haven't even gotten into the story yet and I have all these great memories and reasons to love this series before I've even cracked open the book. The first character you meet on page one is Logan Ninefingers. He finds himself in a precarious Wile E. Coyote situation and the very first dialogue that is spoken is shit. That's one of my favorite words. It happened to be the very first curse word I ever said as a kid and I knew right then this was going to be a character I was going to love. And not only did I love that character, I loved all of the characters, whether they were good, bad, or great. They were written so well, I didn't need a plot, I didn't care about a plot. In fact, I didn't even start paying attention to the plot until the second book in the series. I mowed through the entire First Law world of books. It's a series that once you get to the end and you just see how everything shakes out over the entire course of the series, you can't wait to go back and start over from the beginning because you realize how much you missed. All of the breadcrumbs the author put throughout the series as to how that added up to the ending, oh, it's so good. Highly recommend this series. Hi there, my name's Dom from the channel Dominish Books, where I love to talk about fantasy, and in particular self-published fantasy, and also a little bit of sci-fi as well. Now, I would be lying to say that The First Law is one of my favourite series, but it is one that I definitely enjoy to at least the four books in it that I have read so far. But one of the things that I really, really do like about it is the characters. Joe Abercrombie's characters do get talked about quite a lot, especially that man Glockter. For me, though, there are some characters who stand out above and beyond even him. And those collectively are the Northmen. I really loved reading any scene that featured Dogman and his crew. Logan Ninefingers is a great character, but it's the interaction of the others that really make these books sing for me. I just find that the banter, the camaraderie that these men have is just so natural and it's full of humour and I really, really love reading them. I would love to read a story just about their adventures because I just feel so home when they're on the pages. The books themselves can be pretty dark in places and the deeds that the Northmen do, again, are pretty dark, pretty gruesome in many ways as well, but the humour that's in these sections really does give it a light touch as well, especially for me because it is a style of humour that just really works well for me. And that's why I love Dogman and his crew of Northmen and together they elevate First Law from what is for me a good series to a really good series. And now those wonderful people have spoken. We've got some more wonderful people speaking very soon. But now I'm afraid it's it's our turn. Back to us. Um, Why do we love the first law so much? Will, uh, kick well, us off. I Don't love kick it. Us, but... I won't kick you or punch you or anything of the kind. Uh, this Logan. is a very uh, dark and aggressive series of lots of war thrown conflicts, but we will not bring that into no. ourselves yet. The first law, I think, is genius because Joe Abercrombie himself is a genius. The overall pro style of this is just absolutely brilliant. He alters the style of every character you follow, which really makes what the standout element is. The characters really shine above almost anything I've ever read before. The characters from uh, Logan Glockter 
Jezel and so on are absolutely brilliant. And I read this series, I think I read The Blade itself four years ago now, or maybe three, and it stands at the top of my kind of memories of if I pick best scenes out of books or most memorable characters, because they are so vivid and I don't think that will ever change. And it's a brilliant, intricate storyline that has twists and turns, really subverts your expectations, but in a way that is still satisfying. And on top of that, we love some good British humour, don't we? And Jabba Crombie has a fantastic dark British humour that at moments where everything is going wrong, he somehow makes you laugh and he mm, makes you feel yeah. guilty for laughing. Yeah. And yeah, he has a magnificent way of doing that in a way that does not compromise the tone or atmosphere of the books. Yeah, and I believe that Joe Abercrombie isn't a nihilist. I don't think this series is nihilistic. I think he's just a realist, really. And he, he knows what's going on. It's the same on. thing. Uh, I absolutely love the character moments here. There are moments that made me laugh. There are moments that made me just cry so much because the payoff is so sweet. I think Joe Abercrombie does such a good job of building up these characters with these <laughs> these crumbling bricks uh, and by the end they have crumbled well and truly and it is just it's marvelous to see it's always so much fun reading a Jabal combi book because of the humor the dry wit uh, like will said there is kind of a british humor in there but is this uh, lots of sarcasm uh, and also the characters go through some unholy stuff uh, and that it is, is it is it. fun to read it you can't deny it uh, i think uh, one of my favourite things about the first lot is all of those lovely character moments. Sometimes they're not so lovely, but uh, yeah, they just absolutely just take my breath away, some of them, because of how attached you do get to these characters, even though you don't mean to be. Because really, if you uh, if it was on paper, which these books are, obviously, but if you wrote, you know, if you read what this character Logan is like, or what this character Glockter or Jezel was like, then uh, I don't think you would be anticipating that you would kind of get in their corner. Uh, but you really, really do get in that corner by the end of it because Jabba Crombie is such an accomplished writer. And when someone has such an individual and unique voice, you know, something else to bring to their writing, then anything they write is enjoyable to read, I find. And Jabba Crombie is one of those writers. Hi, I'm Ben from Books with Bengus Khan. And I want to thank Ed and Will for inviting me on to talk about one of my favorite authors in the world, Joe Abercrombie. I love so much about his writing. We can start with intricate, long-term plotting with unbelievable payoffs at the end of his trilogies or standalone books. We can talk about the character work that is dripping with so much voice in all of their dialogue, in their internal monologues, and getting me to care about people who might not be the most traditional, heroic, virtuous types. Or the action, the incredibly gritty, immersive action, whether it's small-scale fights or large-scale epic battles. I almost died and went to reading heaven the first time Joe pulled his POV hopping trick in The Heroes, where we just jump from one soldier's head to the next, to the next, to the next. Or is it his themes and that biting social commentary and satire, that mirror he's holding up to humanity's foibles and to give us a sense of who we really are inside as the individuals or as a society. I don't think I've laughed as hard as when reading all of the first law books. He continually had me in stitches in one moment, just laughing out loud, in the next gaping in shock through gut punch after gut punch. It is just a tremendously engaging roller coaster ride reading any of Joe Abercrombie's books. Joe's books are so unpredictable, you never know what's going to happen because they don't follow any traditional tropes, so you're just on the edge of your seat, and I am always excited to see what he's going to come up with next. Hey everybody, I am Madison Goodyear, and I love The First Law. So this is one of the first series I read when I got back into reading, and I can honestly say that it had me hooked on the first page. I am one of those readers that prioritizes character work, dialogue, and a believable lived-in world over almost everything. Now, I'm not saying that this book or this series has no plot. That's not true. But it is somewhat of a slow burn. And if you're like me and you love just character work that is next level, this is going to be for you. It is dark. It is gritty. But man, these characters in this are just going to live rent-free in your head for the rest of your life. It has one of my favorite characters of all time. So if you're interested in dabbling in grimdark, you got to start with the man himself, Joe Abercrombie. 
Hey everybody, Books of Zara here. Why do I love The First Law World by Joe Abercrombie? I'm going to boil this down to four main reasons. The first main reason is the setting. It's a very dark, gritty setting. It feels very grounded in reality. And even though it is dark and gritty, Joe Abercrombie has this wonderful ability to counteract that darkness by utilising his incredibly dry, sarcastic humour. Very British humour. It's a wonderful way to make this world feel a little bit less grim and a little bit less dark. The second thing I love, and you'll hear a lot of people talk about this, is his character work. His character work is phenomenal. A lot of these characters, if not all of these characters, are despicable in their own way. They're very morally grey. You never really know whether what they're saying or what they're doing is coming from any place of honesty. And yet we still root for them. We want them to win. We want them to succeed. And even though they are honestly just the worst types of people, they're also quite human and they're fallible. That's part of the reason why we can get behind them because they're so human. His characters are still some of my favourite characters to this day. Name a better writer than Gerard Bacomi when it comes to characters. The third thing is the world building kind of connected to point one. I would say that Joe Abercrombie's world is not the most detailed world, but yet it is detailed enough to make us feel a level of kinship to the world. It feels very grounded in reality, and so it's not too hard to feel like we could be in that world, and that's something that I really appreciate as a reader. And then the last thing that I will mention, because I'm supposed to keep this under two minutes, is the thematic work. He covers very intimate themes like friendship and loyalty and trust, and being able to create our own paths where maybe a certain path has been thrust upon us. And then he talks about more meta themes, about rule, about how society is very fragile and how political constructs can be ultimately the end of that society. He talks all about a lot of different things and yet he packs it into his books in such a way that doesn't make it feel like you know, you're reading a political philosophy text and that makes it very accessible. If you haven't read The First Law of the World, what have you been doing? Where have you been? You should go and pick it up. Well, hello, Ed and Will. It's Josh here at Red Fury Books, here to talk about one of my favorite authors, Joe Abercrombie, and one of my favorite book series, The First Law. But what to talk about in a little one to two minute clip? I could talk about characters. I could talk about the cinematic battle sequences. I could talk about how Abercrombie has such a unique narrative voice that I just love. Or maybe I could just quote Logan Ninefingers for two minutes. I think that'd be fun. But instead, let's talk about plot twists because I feel that Abercrombie's plot twists are different than most authors. I feel that most authors, when a plot twist happens, it's a convention of plot. The author wants to take the story in a new and unexpected direction. But I feel with Abercrombie, it's not a plot device, but a character device. Because I feel when a plot twist happens in a Joe Abercrombie novel, it's a direct result of a character's motivation forcing the plot in that direction. I've heard many authors say that they just create their characters, put them together, and just watch and see what happens and then write about it. But I'll be honest, I always felt that that analogy just rang false until I read Abercrombie, because I feel that's exactly what happens. These characters are so well realized that he puts them together and the plot goes unexpected directions because of their motivations. So I just talked about some writing conventions, so this probably wasn't as interesting as what some other people will talk about. Maybe I should have just quoted Logan Ninefingers for about two minutes. You've got to be realistic about these things. All right, Dylan over here from Friends Talking Fantasy Podcast with my lifelong friend Charles, and the question has been posed to us. Why should you read Joe Abercrombie's first law books and they came to the right place because we're gigantic fans of the man and his work so if you like fully realized morally gray characters and gritty grim dark fantasy that still manages to have an incredible dry sense of humor throughout then this series is for you abercrombie is the master of dialogue creative use of point of view and he just has incredible voice Despite the immense amount of grimdark works of fiction that have followed in Joe's wake, his work still stands alone as wholly unique and undoubtedly worth a read. And he's just a delight as a person, too. You got to interview him, and he's really, really cool. So that's the extra bonus when the man himself is a really nice dude. Well said, Dylan Joe Abercrombie is a very nice man who we did interview. But, you know, if I'm going to be honest... 
it's a kind of overrated. Let's be honest here. You know, <laughs> he's written like what is it now? Nine books, many of which are on the New York Times bestselling list, but not one measly film franchise. Not not even a TV <laughs> franchise. You know, in his whole works, the only one I own multiple copies of is <laughs> The Wisdom of Crowds. So unless right. you count audiobooks, then it's the only one I own three copies of because I have them all. <laughs> right. And then and if you can't get Charles Stone more than that, then what are you I doing? I mean, like, why don't this nine books? I only have three of one of them. Like, what's up with that? <laughs> and then of all the books in my collection, only two of them are signed. So you got to ask yourself, What's going on here? You know, I think two is such a low number, you know, zero film franchises. There's room to improve, but you know what? He's a nice guy. We like to support him and uh, yeah, check him out. If you feel interested, if you feel inclined, I highly recommend. It's an interesting route to have gone there, Charles. <laughs> All right. Peace. Peace.